Welcome, everyone. I'm Justin Paperno with White Collar Advice, and I'm about to make a bold statement uh, as I do this Facebook Live. Here's the statement. Here it goes. Uh, I think this may be one of the most impactful and important videos I'll ever film about preparing for mastering life in federal prison. Uh, to help guide this video, uh, I'm going to pull up a blog I wrote and put on White Collar Advice, and I'll put a link up to that. And the name of the blog is Three Stages to uh, three stages of a federal prison term. And to read the whole blog, it's several thousand words, you should go and check it out. And I've decided to write the blog and film this video in part because I continually, our company continually gets calls from people who are home from prison and they're struggling. And when I interview them, much of their struggle relates to how they served their sentence. So when I say it's one of the most important blogs I'll write or videos I'll film on preparing for or mastering life in federal prison, is it's because we don't want the rest of your life to be defined by your, your prison term. I don't say that in the like, hey, let's get inspired and get motivated in a Tony Robbins type way, but rather to help you understand decisions you make now are going to influence the rest of your life. They're going to play a significant role in how you emerge from this experience. And to do that successfully, you should break out your prison term in three stages. We're going to talk about those three stages today. First, to get more in depth into these stages or what our team calls the metaphorical U-shaped curve that I'm going to talk about in a moment. You should go to chapter 14 and page 141 of Lessons from Prison. The book is free. The only investment is your time. So to get more into the U-shaped curve, uh, go get Lessons from Prison for free at White Collar Advice. And I'm also going to talk about it here, of course. So what is this? what are these three stages and what exactly is this U-shaped curve? Okay. The U-shaped curve manages a person's path or prisoner's path through confinement. So to understand this U, look at society as being above the U. And when you enter prison, you're beginning to descend this U. And that's the first stage. So the first stage of federal prison is when you're working your way down this U. The stage two at the bottom of this metaphorical you is like when you're halfway done with your sentence. So practically speaking, let's just say you have a 24 month sentence. Uh, when you're halfway through or 12 months in, you're at the bottom of the U. Stage three of this term, just to have a little overview as we work our way into this video, stage three is when you're ascending the U, right? Stage one, you're in. Stage two, you're halfway done. Stage three, you're ascending. Got it, great. Let's talk about stage one and what that experience is like. I've been to federal prison. I know many of the people watching this video are, may go to federal prison. You may have a loved one in federal prison. When you surrender to federal prison, you're stepping into this foreign world that you've only seen sensationalized on television uh, and we've read and heard about for so long. So as you're stepping into this new world or as you begin to descend this you, you have all of these anxieties, both in prison, but out, frankly, outside of prison, right? When you surrender, you're immediately obsessed and fixating on everything that you're missing, everything you've lost. That could be your family, sex, freedom, your toilet, your favorite pillow, your favorite TV show, your car, your whatever it may be. As you surrender to this foreign world of confinement, it's very easy to fixate on everything you've lost. It's very easy to fixate and focus on the outside world. So now you're at a crossroads now when you're at that stage one, immediately after you surrender to prison, there's a number of ways that you can go. So as you assess each stage of your prison journey, and frankly, it doesn't matter whether your sentence is one year or 10 years, everyone is gonna go through these three stages. So as you step into prison and begin to work your way through stage one, you have very important decisions to make you have to assess how you're going to spend your time. Now, our way to prepare someone for prison may not be right for everyone. You've got to exercise and use your own judgment and to determine what's best for you and your family. Our approach may not be best for you. I'm offering advice that's worked for every member of our team and for the majority of our clients willing to do the work. A number of people surrender and in that stage one, they're in such shock and disarray, they choose to tune out the whole outside world. That's an option, right? So there are a number of people who will tell you, forget about the outside world. It's too hard to stay connected to them. Get ingrained in your prison routine. This is your new world. Forget about that outside world. 
So in so doing, that prisoner may begin to neglect his network and not pay appropriate attention to what life will be like on the other side. That's an opportunity for you. I wrote about that experience in Lessons from Prison, and I wrote about it in this blog that I'll put up a, a, a link to. And in this blog, I reference a gentleman, who a, a banker from Oregon, who was scared to death to go home. And I noticed this shortly into my prison term that he was scared and, you know, what's wrong? And I asked him, I'm like, bud, what's wrong? You're going home soon. And when I asked him, he said, how, am, how the hell am I going to get a job and support a family? I think I should have turned down the halfway house. I need more time to figure this out. Think about that. You've served your prison term and you're scared to go home. That's an unfortunate reality of federal prison. And when I interviewed him, I later learned and wrote in this blog that he was advised by his fellow prisoners when he surrendered to prison in stage one as he was descending this you to forget about the outside world. What's the takeaway or practical takeaway for all of you? The moment you surrender to prison, you've got to show a level of discipline and commitment that may be foreign to you because you're in this foreign world. It may be so hard to think of waking early and writing and documenting the journey and avoiding problems and being very careful about the friendships that you form. In a blog I wrote last week, I said this, uh, this can destroy your prison term. And I was referring to forming friendships and associating with the wrong people. So think about that while you're in stage one after you've surrendered to federal prison. How disciplined are you? And what are you doing with the knowledge, right? In the blog I wrote, I mentioned how my degree from USC was utterly useless because I didn't do anything with it. My first stage in federal prison was spent exercising six hours a day and living the good old glory days about what my life was like. And it wasn't until I met my partner, Michael Santos, who, you know, I kind of say famously said to me, I shared amongst my friends and I wrote about it in Lessons from Prison. One day I was in Michael's cubicle and now I'm already in stage two because I was now about four or five months into my prison term. So I've wasted stage one by exercising and living the glory days. So I've done nothing to prepare for my inevitable release. Now I'm in stage two. Where will you be in stage two? Well, you'll be happier, more productive, or more fulfilled if you've used that first part of the prison term, descending that you productively with discipline, choosing the right friendships, right? So now I'm in stage two. I'm in Michael Santos's cubicle one day, and I'm like, dude, I just ran 12 miles today. And I'm getting my six pack packs first time since college. And I just did 12 pull-ups and he's like, that's great, bud. But let me ask you a question. I'm like, what? It's like, how much are people going to pay you to, to run that 10 miles? And I'm like, that's, that's not, a, I don't know the answer to that. And he said, well, how much are people going to pay you to do those, you know, 10 or 15 pull-ups? Like, well, I don't think anyone's going to actually be paying me anytime. I'll take the money, but I don't think anyone's going to be paying me anytime soon to, to be doing pull-ups. He's like, well, have you looked around? Have you observed the way most people serve their sentence with one calendar page turning to the next without preparing for the inevitable obstacles that, that await them? Have you given consideration to what your life is going to be like on the other side because all you do is exercise and associate with people who tell you what you want to hear because then it will be their time, their turn to tell you what they want to hear and vice versa? And I'm like, oof, I was humbled. I was a little embarrassed. I was delusional. I'm like, well, I have a degree from USC. Everything will work out. Again, the degree means nothing if I don't apply what I've learned. And that's the takeaway for you. So as you emerge or you step into phase stage one and you descend this you, it does no good if you went to Harvard, Yale, or junior college. It, doesn't, it means nothing. Your knowledge means nothing if you don't consistently apply it. If you do not apply it and then pivot and get data and then go in a different direction based on what you've learned, you are wasting this prison experience. Absolutely wasting it. Because let me tell you eventually what's going to happen. If you have stage one where you've surrendered to prison, you have all these anxieties about leaving your life behind. Then by the time you get to stage two, as the case with me, as will be the case with all of you in stage two, you will have mastered prison, at least in your own way, avoiding trouble. You'll form friendships, you'll know You'll have the best job, the best bunk. You'll be exercising. You'll have your visitation schedule down. Your family will know exactly what time you're going to call home every single day. You will have your routine down in stage two. It's really the easiest part of the prison experience. Again, again whether it's a year or 10 years, because you've gotten over the anxieties of surrendering and you're still kind of far, far enough away where you don't really have to think so much about your release. But as the U-shaped curve takes effect, you're going to begin to ascend that you and work your way into stage three.
And in stage three is where I saw so much uh, struggle and heartache and regret. Regret from prisoners about to go home who couldn't enjoy their inevitable release, the reuniting with family, because they wonder what they were going to do, how they were going to pay restitution, their health insurance, or get a job, right? What, what were they going to do? And in those interviews that I write about in Lessons from Prison and elsewhere, all of these prisoners said the same thing to me. I wasted this prison term. I've wasted what I could have done here. I bought into the prison mantra that there's nothing that you can do from here. And I associated with people who told me what I want to hear or worse, I had some good ideas and I let haters dissuade me and tell me that it was a worthless idea. And I procrastinated figuring I'll get around to it. You've got to choose action over in, inaction. You've got to choose discipline over procrastination. Wake early, write, think, create. If not, you're going to get to the whole, the other end of your prison term with a whole new set of anxieties. And that's what stage three of a federal prison term is. It's the pressures and anxieties that await you on the other side. Bills, mortgage, family, all things that I just touched on. So what's the practical takeaway for all of you watching um, this short video? What's the practical takeaway if you read the blog? I'll put a little, if you go to whitecollaradvice.com and read this blog, uh, that I wrote about the three stages of a federal prison term in this metaphorical U, right? Again, you're descend, uh, descending the U, the bottom of the U is halfway through your prison term, then boom, you're going to be ascending that U pretty quickly in stage three. You have got to get to stage three with confidence, with a plan, and you can only get there by knowing that when you surrendered, you had a plan and a purpose and you were disciplined and committed by associating with the right people and creating a new record. If you can surrender to prison with this clearly defined plan and choose action over procrastination and be very selfish with your time. Now, I'm fortunate to be somewhat of a, I'm an introvert at heart. I'm, I don't mind spending time alone. I like my own, my own company. And for me, that was, I was fortunate once I realized how I was wasting my time. I credit Michael Santos with that. But I'm filming this video and I believe it's so important because if you can immediately get over those anxieties from home and all that you're missing, and I get it, I endured it too. But if you can immediately focus on what life is going to be like on the other side, when you reach stage three, which is coming, you'll feel better and stronger and you'll be more prepared and you won't turn down the halfway house and you won't turn down visits or be afraid to call home when your family says, so what do you do next? What's the plan? How will you sustain yourself and support our family? If you haven't invested the time early in your prison term to answer those questions, when you get there, uh, the experience will turn out to be what I've said before. It can turn out to be a life sanction, a life sentence, because one, three, five, 10, 15, 20 years from now, you'll still be lamenting over the time you spent in a minimum security camp and the unfairness. I understand it. I heard it every day. And that's why I'm filming this video and I'm going to reiterate and wrap up how I opened. I believe this will be the most important video I filmed in a while on life in federal prison. If only because you can overcome and understand that the moment you surrender to prison, you begin taking action, exercise discipline, avoid the wrong people, knowing that eventually it's going to come to an end. I remember when I was in jail, I never thought it was going to end. <laughs> I used to get incredibly jealous when people would, let me get off this screen share. I used to get really jealous when people would leave. I'm like, well, what are they? Why are they leaving? That's not fair. And Michael would say, they've been here for years. You just got here. And I'm like, no, no, but they're leaving. I want to leave. There are parts of you where it's like, you feel like it's actually never going to end, right? I mean, how many of you right now fighting a case, you're sentencing or getting extended, or if you're going to prison, you can't envision doing one, three, five, or six years. So it's hard to prepare in part because you don't think it's actually ever going to end but it does end. I'm 12 years now on the other side of it ending. And I attribute a lot of the success that I've had to the work that I put in in prison. But my biggest regret is wasting the first stage or stage one of my prison journey. My biggest regret is descending that you with nothing other than exercise and good old glory days. And it wasn't until Michael Santos said to me, ain't nobody, he doesn't say ain't, I'll try to forget. Nobody's going to pay you to run 10 miles a day and nobody's going to pay you to do pull-ups. You're going home soon. You better begin ascending the you properly. If not, you're going to have so many anxieties, you're not going to want to leave. And that was transformative for me. I wanted to be transformative for you. And that's how I'll close.
if you don't implement what I talk about in this video, it's it's a total, it's a wasted video. You have the knowledge. I'm telling you what to do. The question is, will you show discipline and do it? Will you invest the time to create a new record, to wake early, to write? I think everyone going to federal prison should write. Imagine if you wrote for 10 or 15 minutes a day, documenting the journey, writing down what's working, what is not working. At the end of a year, two years, you've got a book. You have content you can use for the rest of your life. Do you have the discipline to write for 10 or 15 minutes a day? Do you have the discipline to do it on days you would rather do just about anything else, which frankly is almost every single day in federal prison because you don't want to be there? Do you have the discipline to do it two weeks into your prison term when you begin to tell yourself, what a waste of taxpayer money that I'm here? I owe restitution. I should be home working. Why am I in a non -violent? Why am I in a minimum security camp with no fences or barbed? What am I doing here? Because others are going to be feeding that to you. Others are going to be remote, and it's true, by the way. I mean, so many of you watching this, there's no need for you to be warehoused in a minimum security camp. I get if you owe restitution, you should be working, and there's no good for you to be in prison. I understand it. But if you buy into that and spend too much time on it, you're procrastinating. And when you get to stage three, your experience is going to be harder. So take action, read the blog, of course, get lessons from prison for free, jump to chapter 14, where I write about this metaphorical U-shaped curve and the three stages of a prison term. And I beg you, whether we speak or we don't, begin preparing the second you get there. Know that you're going to be ascending that you soon enough. And if you can begin preparing for that in stage one, life on the other side will be easier for you, but more importantly, for those that love and support you and, uh, and those who have stood by you. So thank you very much for checking out this video. Of course, I hope you found value in it. And I look forward to returning soon and providing you with more content. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Be well, be safe. Bye-bye.